Okay, so it's time now to return to optics. We started out with some motivation, some comparison of IMDD and coherent detection. Then we saw an example on QPSK. And now we're going to go into how do we do this QPSK modulation in optics. So the IQ implementation, and specifically the example QPSK in optics. I'd like to refer you to an excellent tutorial on uh, the fundamentals of coherent optical fiber communications, and I'll be using heavily some of the information contained in that article. So this was the modulation, the QPSK example that we saw. And uh, you know we talk about this being an RF implementation. This is classic wireless communications uh, basic ideas on QPSK modulation. And now we want to put that into optics. So when we look at the optical embodiment, if you will, of this uh, IQ modulator, well, we're going to modulate phase. And so if we think about this in-phase branch, what's the in-phase branch going to look like for an optical uh, transmitter? Well, I'm going to have an optical carrier coming in. And I'm going to have, in this case, a uh, Mach Zender configuration for my modulator. And it's going to operate on the phase. It's a phase modulator. So I have my RF signal coming in to control the modulator to modulate the phase of this optical carrier. And then, of course, the signal comes out, and I transmit it over my fiber. Now, what do I do for the QPSK example? Well, it pretty much looks the same. The only difference is I'm going to introduce a phase shift in one of the arms in order to turn this, what was a cosine, into a sine. In other words, to make them orthogonal to one another. So, of course, I have in one modulator structure, I have both the in-phase and the quadrature branches. And in fact, they're in the form of a Mach sender interferometer uh, architecture. So here, the shared optical carrier comes in. I send one data stream to the upper arm, to the I branch. I send the other data stream to the Q branch. They get combined together on one optical signal for transmission over the fiber. Detection. Okay, that was the transmitter side. How is it that I get to detect the phase that I'm modulating in my QPSK? So how do I access the phase at reception? I told you earlier there's going to be three essential ingredients. And let's take them one at a time again. We have the local oscillator, which we're going to use to beat against our incoming signal. Local oscillator is just another laser located at the receiver. I'm going to use a 2 by 2 coupler, a 3 dB 2 by 2 coupler. And I'm going to use this not just to divide, equally divide power between the, uh, at the outputs, but I'm also going to use it to separate signals with a 180 degree uh, rotation. And then finally, I'm going to be using balanced photodetectors to get a differential value for photodetectors. So let's see how is it that these three essential ingredients, how do I use that in order to actually access the phase at the receiver. So here is the form of the coherent receiver, which has our three essential building blocks in it. And let's start with the local oscillator. So I have my signal coming in, and I also have another light source at my receiver. And you'll notice that I put a polarization controller here because the example I'm going to give you first is a single polarization example so that we can master the concepts of how to detect phase. And then once we've finished with that, we'll then discuss how it is we're going to multiplex on polarization as well. So for this example, we're putting a polarization controller here to just reinforce the idea that we have the same polarization on our local oscillator as we do on our signal. OK. So with that caveat, we'll continue. There's our local oscillator, the first essential agreement. And the second essential ingredient is this uh, 3dB 2x2 two two coupler. And when I'm talking about um, the 180 degree phase shift, what I mean by that is I'm going to get at E1 equal contributions from the data signal and from the local oscillator. And those two are going to sum on this output. However, on the second one, what I'm going to get is the difference between these two input uh, signals. 
Finally, I have the balanced photodiodes. So here you see not one photodiode, but it appears in, always in pairs. So I have two photodiodes, one at each output of this 2x2 two two coupler. And the final photo current that I'm going to observe is going to be the difference between these two uh, sub-tributaries uh, of photo current. And so then, of course, uh, uh, we're going to use the differential value of the current. By the way, when I say balanced, what do I mean by balanced? Balanced means that pretty much these two photodiodes are identical. They have identical characteristics. They're manufactured under the same process at similar times. And therefore, they're going to act very similarly on the incident signal. So if I have an identical signal up here and down here, when I uh, subtract them, they should really cancel out because these photodiodes are so similar. Uh, also, when I talk about balanced photodiode, I'm, I'm saying that I'm going to use this differential current. So the current is the difference between these others. So that's what I mean by a balanced photodiode.